jet-powered all-weather interceptor aircraft. The Northrop F-89 Scorpion was an American all-weather, twin-engine interceptor aircraft built during the 1950s, the first jet-powered aircraft designed for that role from the outset to enter service. Though its straight wings limited its performance, it was among the first United States Air Force jet fighters equipped with guided missiles and notably the first combat aircraft armed with air-to-air -air nuclear weapons. The Scorpion stemmed from a United States Army Air Force's Air Technical Service Command specification for a night fighter to replace the P-61 Black Widow. The preliminary specification, sent to aircraft manufacturers on 28 August 1945, required two engines and an armament of six guns, either 0.60-inch machine guns or 20mm auto cannon. The aircraft was to be armed with aerial rockets stored internally and six guns split between two flexible mounts, four guns forward and two in the rear. Each mount had to be capable of 15 degrees of movement from the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. In March 1946, the USAF selected the Curtis Wright XP-87 Black Hawk, adapted from their proposed XA-43 attack aircraft and the Northrop N-24 design, one of four submitted by the company. The N-24, designed by Jack Northrop, was a slim-bodied swept-wing aircraft with a two-man pressurized cockpit and conventional landing gear. To reduce drag, the two Allison J-35 turbojet engines were buried in the lower fuselage, directly behind their air intakes, and they exhausted underneath the rear fuselage. A contract for two aircraft, now designated the XP-89, and a full-scale mock-up was approved on 13 June, although construction of the mock-up had begun immediately after the USAF announced that the ON-24 had been selected. The inspectors believed that the radar operator needed to be moved forward, closer to the pilot, with both crewmen under a single canopy, the magnesium alloy components of the wing replaced by aluminum alloy, and the fuel tankage directly above the engines moved. The position of the horizontal stabilizer also proved to be unsatisfactory, as it was affected by the engine exhaust, and it would be blanked out by airflow from the wing at high angles of attack. Another inspection of the mock-up was held on 17 December, and the inspectors suggested only minor changes, even though the fuselage fuel tanks were still above the engines. Northrop's efforts to protect the fuel tanks were considered sufficient, as the only alternative was to redesign the entire aircraft. The slim rear fuselage and the high-mounted horizontal stabilizer led Northrop employees calling it the Scorpion a name later formally adopted by the Air Force. The wing could not fit the circular type ailerons used in the P-61, so Northrop used the decelerons designed for the unsuccessful XP-79 prototype a month before the prototype made its first flight on 16 August 1948 at Murakami Airfield, the USAF changed its designation for fighter aircraft from P to F. The XF-89 was fitted with 4,000 pounds Allison J-35A9 turbojets and proved to be seriously underpowered. The pilots were not impressed with any of the aircraft and recommended procurement of an interim aircraft that resulted in the development of the Lockheed F-94 Starfire from the training version of the Lockheed F-80 Shooting Star. The Air Force subsequently cancelled the production contract for the F-87 to free up money for the Scorpion. By November 1949 the second aircraft was virtually complete, but the Air Force was concerned about the design's poor thrust-to-weight ratio and decided to implement a weight reduction program, as well as upgrading the engines to the more powerful Allison J33A21 fitted with an afterburner. Other major changes included the replacement of the nose gun turret by the Hughes Design 6 gun nose, and slash ARG33 radar, and Hughes E1 fire control system permanent wingtip fuel tanks, and the ability to lower the complete engine for better maintenance access. The new nose added three feet to the length of the aircraft. It was redesignated designated YF-89A to better reflect its role as a pre-production testbed to evaluate equipment and changes planned for the F-89A production aircraft. The aircraft was essentially complete by February 1950. Shortly afterward, the aircraft crashed on the 22nd of February, killing the observer, when flutter developed in the elevator and the subsequent vibrations caused the entire tail to break off. 
fixes for the problem involved the addition of a jet wake fairing at the bottom rear of the fuselage between the engines, external mass balances for the elevator, pending the design of internal mass balances, and the addition of exhaust deflectors to the fuselage to reduce the turbulence and the consequent flutter. Well before the YF-89A was complete, a $39,011,622 contract was awarded to Northrop on 13 May 1949 for 48 F-89A aircraft, one static test airframe and the modifications made to the YF-89A. Production was authorized in January 1949, with the first production F-89A flying in September 1950. The type entered service with the 84th Fighter Interceptor Squadron in June 1951, experiencing considerable problems with engines and other systems, and soon gave way to the F-89C. Despite repeated engine changes, problems persisted, compounded by the discovery of structural problems with the wings that led to the grounding of the F-89 and forced a refit of 194A, B, and C models. The F-89J became the only aircraft to fire a live genie as the John shot of Operation Plum Bob on 19 July 1957. This version of the aircraft was extensively used within the semi-automatic ground environment air defense system. This aircraft was the last F-89 remaining in service when it was transferred to the museum from the Mene Air National Guard in July 1969.